Welcome to this new chapter where we want to take a closer look to lighting our scenes and also how to set cameras. In this first lesson I want to talk about IPR rendering and so for this lesson I prepared a scene where we have some demo materials on our mailbox. Also we have here two cameras in our scene and also a light setup which is a skylight with a distant light as a sun so that we can show a little bit better how the interactive rendering works. So to make now a first interactive renderer, we have to search for the render view panel. You find it here normally in your user interface. If you don't have it here or you want to have a floating panel, please remember that you can make new panels here. Go to window, new floating panel, and absolutely every panel, also these panels here, we can switch to another panel if we like. So make a right mouse button click here on this little tab name. And here you can now decide which kind of panel you want to have. We have here our viewers, we have the inspectors, animation and so on. And so if you now go through them here and go to the legacy rendering, which we are doing because this is now Houdini 18, we go here into legacy rendering and say we want to have a render view here. And so you see it looks now exactly like this here and this here you can now place on a separate monitor if you like. In my case I use this render panel here and in the moment everything is black because I haven't done anything yet. The first thing we can do now is we can click here render. In the moment we do that Houdini is generating a so named mantra node for us. So if you later want to render something out, we need a node for that and a context where these nodes live. And the nodes we generate are mantra nodes. They live here in the render output. So if you go here to the networks and go here to the out context, you see this context in the moment is empty. It's named outputs. And here you can press the tab key and you see these are the ROPs, the render output nodes. And what you can do here is you can go to render and select here a render engine, which you have installed, for example, Mantra or OpenGL. And if you have installed, you can use RenderMan here and so on. Normally we do that here by hand and you will see that later in the rendering chapter. But Houdini needs for the interactive renderer a render node. And the cool thing is in the moment you click here render and you don't have a Mantra IPR node, in this moment Houdini is generating one for us. Also it generates now the scene. This takes a while and then you will see that now our rendering starts. You also see here now the path to the render node and if I press now the H here in the outputs you see this is the Mantra IPR. If you delete it it will be regenerated if you make an IPR renderer again. So you can tweak this node if you like, but in my case, we don't want to talk farther about this node. So I go back here now in the object context and we take a look here. In this window, you can first scroll out with your mouse wheel. Also, you can hold down the middle mouse button to move the image here, or you can press the H key for framing the whole plate here in this window. You find here an option bar where we can start a render, we can pause it or stop it. And this is really important because this render process here will not stop. It runs through and you see this white bar, but we have here an option which is named auto update. What means if you change something in your scene, this scene here is re-rendered again and so sometimes in the background the renderer is going on forever and you think what's going on, why is my machine so slow? So most of the people then have forgotten to stop the renderer later because it works also in the background. Then here you see a drop down where you can select your render output node and here we have now the Mantra IPR linked and if you have built your own you can select them here. And here you see the camera which you use in the moment. I don't have delivered the camera and so it says okay I look into the ROPS render operator here to ask for a camera and because we don't have specified a camera it uses in most cases a view or a camera which 
he finds here. Sometimes it doesn't work. So we are normally on the safe side. If we switch here to the mantra IPR, you can do it here with switching to out, looking into the node here. And here you see that's the camera which Houdini is now expecting. It's named Cam1. We don't have a Cam1, but you can override this here in the drop down. So if you go here, you see two cameras which I've defined and also our scene view. So if I go now to scene view and you see I'm really zoomed out from the scene and click render here again, it regenerates the scene now. And now you see that this framing here is really close to this here. So it really uses now this scene view. And what you can do now here, if you have cameras, and that's the reason why I've built your cameras, you can switch your now cameras to my close-up camera. This is this one here. You see there's a close-up camera. I stop it, the renderer, go to the close-up camera and click render again so that it can regenerate now the scene with this camera. That's important. Okay, this is the close-up camera and also a top camera if we need it later. Let's go to these here. We've talked about this auto update here. That means if I go now in here and I change something, for example, I go here to the ground and deactivate the display flag here, you see Houdini sees now, okay, the ground is gone. I re-render the whole scene and you haven't done anything here to stop it and start it again. There are cases where you have to stop it manually and restart it because, yeah, this scene has to be regenerated. But I use, or we will use later, this IPR renderer while we are lighting, while we are shading. And so this is a really convenient way of working so that it runs for us in real time and we can make our changes without re-rendering every time. Then we have this button here and as you see when I start my rendering after generating the scene the whole thing starts here undersampled. It helps you to see really fast a good result, a representation how the light will maybe look like without taking too much time to make it noise free. And the more time you give it you see this is the percentage where we are, the better the image gets. So it renders and renders until it stops here with the final rendering. And the final rendering is defined in the mantra node. We'll see that in a later chapter. If you don't want to render like this because you really want to see how the final quality of that, for example, in this area will look like, you can do the following thing. I stop it here and you deactivate this little preview icon here and if you now click render you will see that you get a standard bucket rendering going on. It starts in the middle of my frame but if you now think about okay I don't need really to see all of that you can click somewhere and then you see the buckets will go on from this point on and if you have now seen everything you want to see here and you want then to see for example the flag you click there and the next bucket, which is free, starts now in this area here. A really, really convenient way of working. I can click here to see what's going on in this area. So you don't need to render the whole image. You can really tell Mantra what you're interested in the moment. Also, I stop it again. You have a region rendering, sometimes also really useful. So I can drag here in the viewport by holding down the shift key, a region. And if you now start rendering, you will see that you only get a render in this box here. It works in the bucket mode as well as in the preview mode. So you really get what you are interested in and that's also really convenient. And now I see the bucket is too slow for me. I click here, the preview again, and now I see something like that here. And if you now want to have another region, hold down the shift key, make another region here, and you will see that the rendering now swaps over to this point here. If you want to get rid of the regions completely, you can hold down shift and click outside of the image in the black area, and then everything is back to normal. Let's take a look here around the whole thing. 
you see that we have here a name which is named snap1 and here a camera and this is the name of a snapshot you can do for example you render this here now and you want to store the image until this point you can for example name this yeah this is my shot number one and now i click here this little camera icon and you see we get here a slider and if you drag the slider to the left you see this is shot number one i drag the slider to the right i stop the whole thing this time i go here in the drop down and say show me the top camera i click again to render now we wait don't forget to move your slider to the right otherwise you will always see the old snapshot and this is um, yeah something which <laughs> which happens a lot so the people think the renderer doesn't work anymore because the other slider still sits on the left side so i make another snapshot and this is shot two you see the renaming worked fine i click here and then i stop the whole thing and now we have three separate images this here is the current rendering this here is now the stored shot two and this here is shot one and now you can compare these two images if you like if you want to get rid of an image for example shot one is not the image you want to keep you can press here the minus key so now shot one and so on and so you delete here your shots or you can delete them here i think completely and that's it you also can switch them here if you like if you want to save a frame here you can go here or in most cases i do a right mouse button click here over the ipr and then you can save the frame out here you also see that we have here some tools built in which is really interesting one of the really interesting thing is the inspector here if you do that you can see a little magnifying glass and you can go over a color for example and you see some information where this pixel is which color it has and really important under base materials you see which material is used here in slash matte context the ground material and if i go here over the flag you see in the slash matte context the flag material and so on so you can really inspect here your image because you don't know which shader you've used or something like that so right mouse button click inspect again and so this is gone to finish now this video i want to show you here another cool thing later you will render with layers or image planes like they are named inside of houdini and if you want to see them you can click here on this bar and you see we get another option by here and here are the layers in the moment we only have a color image plane and two other layers here which we can select but later you will see that you see your render layers here and there's another bar here so if you click that you can change which channel you see so these are the channels the alpha channel and here is the full image again here is brightness contrast and so on and this here is also a really interesting button so you adapt to a full pixel range for example you don't see in a z depth the full range because everything is white then you can click it here so the brightness here is tuned down so that the whole histogram is fitting in your monitor space and if you want to get rid of a changed value you see here this indicator color you click here on this brightness again to reset it so this is our ipr which we then use later to make our lighting and shading.